G'day everyone, today I am teaching you part three of learning how to code Spike Prime using Python. And it is all about following lines. Now following a line on the ground is one of those deceptively simple tasks. Uh, and it can cause a lot of headaches if you are new to robotics. So today I am going to teach you a quick and easy proportional line following bit of code it's only about a dozen lines or so, uh, but I'll follow it up with an explanation as to how it was also made so that hopefully if you understand it, you can further your programming skills and learn how to make more complicated code using Python. And don't forget that I will post all the code from today's lesson into the GitHub link in the description below. Now to get started, we're going to build driving base Three. So if you open up the latest version of Spike, drive base three is inside build. And then you scroll down to driving base three. Driving base three is the robot that has a color sensor facing on the ground. Okay. Once you have finished building, then you go back into home and then start a new project, new Python project and call it proportional line following. All right, and this is it. This is where we get started. Let's make it a bit bigger so that everyone can see. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to import all the tools that we need to get running. Okay, so here we're going to import motor pair. Of course, import the color center. We're also going to do some maths. So we're going to import math. And finally, we're going to import time. And of course, like all the other, other lessons, we also have to import hub as well, uh, import port as well. So from hub, import port. So the first thing we do is we set the motor pair. So here we're going to say motor pair dot pair. What are we pairing? Motor pair dot pair one. And it is port C and port D. That makes it so that we now have a motor pair. Afterwards, we need to have a loop. And inside this loop, we're constantly checking what the reflected light intensity is on the color sensor and then feed back into the wheels so that we are moving based on how far we are on or off that line. So here, while true, motor pair dot move, motor pair dot pair one. And this is the tricky bit that I'll have to explain later. Okay, if you are interested in understanding the maths behind it, you can uh, stay back after class. Okay, so here we go math dot floor. Inside, we're going to have negative 3 out of 5 multiplied by the color sensor dot reflection at port B. Uh, and then after that, we use plus 30. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so everyone can see. Port B plus 30, and then the velocity is 280 default. Now this one's a little bit long. Let me just double check to make sure all my brackets are closed. Okay, that's looking good. And then after that, we just say motor pair dot stop. And what are we stopping? We're stopping motor pair pair one. All right, so now you can uh, connect up your robot and then give it a crack.
Now, in case you didn't know, I have made hundreds of technology videos from Lego Robotics to VEX to Raspberry Pi and 3D printing. Teaching technology is my full-time job. So if this video helps you out in any way, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. You can also join our channel membership, the Coding Essentials Plan, by hitting the Join button below. For a small price every month, you can get access to 269 hours worth of Scratch and Python coding videos, and you can cancel at any time. Just hit the Join button to find out more. Now that we have the robot following the line smoothly, we need to control the timing of the program. After all, we don't want the robot to necessarily follow a line endlessly. Uh, if you're in the middle of a FLL or a WRO competition, your robot might follow a line for part of its mission, but then it'll break off to do something else. So uh, the very important task of limiting the line follow is something that is a bit tricky using Python. Now I'll show you how I do this. So let's go back into Spike. And here, remember how we've imported time. We're going to use, uh, use milliseconds to control how often we follow a line. So instead of while true, we're going to use our time to uh, measure exactly how long we are following the line for. Okay, so here we're going to say start, we're going to create a local variable and call it start time. And it's going to equal to time dot ticks ms. All right, so instead of while true, we're going to count the number of milliseconds that have passed since time uh, time dot ticks was first made so here we're going to call um, uh, while time dot ticks underscore ms is less than oh no uh, minus start time minus start time is less than time dot ticks ms uh, open and close brackets is less than however long we want to follow the line for. So let's say 2,000 milliseconds, okay? That means that uh, 2,000 millis means two seconds. If I wanted to move for 5,000 uh, milliseconds, I'll just put 5,000, oops, not 50,000, 5,000 milliseconds, and that would make it so that my robot stops after following the line for five seconds. Now that we have our robot following a line and we are able to limit it using time, it's time to understand how I came up with the, uh, this math formula to work out how to uh, follow the line properly. So basically, um, I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about uh, what I'm doing here. So this is called a linear, uh, linear equation. Okay, so basically the uh, steering uses a gradient intercept, uh, a gradient y-intercept uh, linear equation. Okay, so this is a gradient intercept method line equation, and it is called y equals mx plus b. Okay, uh, basically I'm making y equal to the steering value, and uh, x equals to the um, the uh, light reflection value, and then b is equal to the um, the value of um, the steering value when the reflection is at zero. So after I uh, put down this this formula, basically I sub in the numbers that I want. So uh, when the uh, sensor is equal to 50, basically halfway between white and black, uh, I want the steering to be equal to zero. So uh, steering 
equals zero. And then when sensor is equal to zero, which is uh, when it's completely black, I want the steering to be at 30. Now, if you want your robot to be steering right a little bit more aggressively away from the black line, then you would increase that value up to up to 100. Okay. When the sensor is equal to 100, which means that we're seeing completely white, we change our steering to negative 30. But if you wanted to steer left a little bit more aggressively, then you would have to um, uh, decrease that up down to a negative 100. Okay. Uh, so after I put in these numbers, I have to work out y equals mx plus b. So the steering value, whoops, equals m, and we're going to talk about m in a moment, times x, which is our reflected light intensity, reflected light, mx plus b. So ref m times reflected light plus b. And b is um, up here, the steering value when reflection is zero, which means that it is 30 in our case, right? Because when sensor is reading zero, we're at 30. So the final piece of the puzzle is to find M. And M is basically how, how steep our line is, how steep we are uh, doing this equation. So how aggressive we are uh, changing the, the line. So M is equal to uh, negative one, uh, well, let me go say negative 100 multiplied, uh, no, divided by, divided by the, uh, the maximum and minimum um, uh, difference of that steering. So here it is 60. So divided by 60, so minus 30 to 30, the difference is 60, yeah, 60, uh, which equals to negative 3.5, okay? So that's how I sub all that in, into y equals mx plus b. And then that's how I work out this number. And then I use math floor because uh, in, in the um, argument, we can't use a, um, a decimal number. So that's why I use math floor, okay? That's the explanation of how I came up with this uh, this equation. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, More Educational. Ever since Creator Academy started making Lego education videos, we have been greatly supported by the experts at More Educational. They're an authorized partner of Lego Education with over 25 years experience working with Lego Education products. So if you're in Australia and you want to buy genuine Lego Education products like the ones shown in this video, then make sure you check out the More Educational website. That's it from me today. Make sure you leave in the comment section what Python lessons you'd like to see next. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.